good day everybody welcome back to the channel hey uh, you might have seen my previous video part one of joe's pinhole cameras i'll put a link down below if you haven't well i had a fun time shooting that uh, uh, lengthy uh, series of videos with ethan moses but in the meantime after i put together that first piece i was tinkering around in the garage and i came across a couple unused 35 millimeter developing tanks, these stainless steel tanks. And I had this idea for a long time that I would like to turn a stainless steel developing tank into a self-developing pinhole camera. Drill a hole in the side of the canister, mount a brass pinhole on the inside, have some kind of a shutter and be able to put a piece of paper curved along the side walls inside the camera opposite the pinhole and then you can develop it in the canister and use a rotary base and uh, so I went ahead and put together this little camera last week and uh, this is my first opportunity I've had to test it out let's see what happens well in theory this was one of the easiest pinhole cameras to build the tank is already light tight. It already has the pour spout for pouring liquids in and out. All it needs is a hole drilled in the side and then the pinhole pierced piece of brass glued to the inside and it's and a shutter, of course, and it's pretty well done. So the hardest part was actually getting the hole drilled in the side of the tank, in the steel tank. So getting it started, getting a bit started in there was really rough. Uh, I started by using a metal punch and tried to, with a hammer, tried to ding the metal, put a dimple in it enough so where a tiny little 1 16th inch drill bit was, would take and, and wouldn't dance around the surface of the metal. I couldn't do that. It was too tough. So I resorted to using a... I think this is a 3 16 drill bit, the kind that fits into a rotary tool. This is a Great Neck off-name brand, like a, basically takes the same attachments as a Dremel. And with this conical tip on the drill bit with a point on it, I was able to work a little hole, a really tiny hole, right in the steel, just enough for the tip of this 1 16 inch drill bit to dig in once I used it on my drill press. And then I was able to drill a 1 16th inch hole through the tank. And then once I did that, I could use the larger drill bit with a conical tip and finish drilling the hole there. And then I went to a slightly larger size. I think the final size on this was 3 16ths, just under a quarter inch. And of course the hole in my sleeve style shutter is a quarter inch hole. Then the other challenge, of course, not that hard of a challenge, but was just uh, gluing the piece of brass on the inside. This is two mil, uh, two one thousandths of an inch thick brass. And I mixed up a two part epoxy and put the epoxy around all four sides of the piece of brass and then carefully positioned it in the tank and referenced the pinhole through the opening to get it centered. What I didn't want to have happen is I didn't want the glue before it could cure to migrate in and clog the pinhole. That was the challenge. So I kept having to make sure it was properly positioned. And then I needed to get make sure the edges of that square of brass were pressed down enough and I had to put more glue around the edges to build up a permanent uh, dam, if you will, of glue all the way around it. And it looks like it worked. When you do that, make sure the metal is at room temperature because I normally keep this stuff out in the dark room and in the wintertime it gets cold out there in the garage. So had to make sure this was warmed up to room temperature so the glue would cure properly. But essentially that made a pinhole camera. And from there, all I had to do was fashion this little makeshift shutter, which is just a, basically a piece of two inch wide black uh, craft paper that I've taped clear packing tape on to give it a little bit more liquid resistance if a little bit of liquid spills on it in the developing process. And uh, that's uh, taped around the canister fairly snugly and then a couple pieces of gaffer's tape as an indicator marks for where the pinhole is when you turn the shutter. Anyway, that's pretty simple camera, not much to it. Drilling the hole is the hardest problem. So you're probably thinking to yourself, you just made a bunch of videos about downsizing your pinhole camera collection and now you're making another camera well that's what happens uh you know i'm going to be getting rid of my older cameras and i have this new idea a couple ideas like this but 
Um, I already have a piece of Harman direct positive paper loaded up in this camera. I've already metered the exposure, taken the exposure. It was a brightly lit, sunny scene on my front porch, winter daylight. It was about a two and a half minute exposure. The pinhole was about F280. And now I have some little canisters here that I'd like to, with already developer stop bath fixer and rinse water and I'd like to go ahead and try developing it. I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't used this camera before. I don't know if my developer is too weak or whatever. So this might be a great flop, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try developing this right here on the table. Uh, this is not really a compatible place for doing developing because it's not really good for like this pad material. You don't want to really get it wet or anything. I have my little container here. And I recently got these plastic containers. I have six of them that were given to me. And uh, they hold a little bit more than 100 milliliters of liquid. So I thought that would be a good quantity for using in the little tank here. Developer, stop bath fixer, and then a rinse between each one. And because of the possibility of spills or whatever, um, I'm going to put my rotary base in this other tray here so I can rotate the, the tank like this and uh, not get any spills on the table. Now, uh, one of the things I should mention here, this camera has a pinhole, a metal pinhole mounted on the side of it, and it's made of brass, and brass will degrade over time exposed to acids like stop bath and other chemicals. So I don't want to get the pinhole wet. So my intention when I develop this is to keep the pinhole in an up position, which is marked by these two pieces of tape. That's where the pinhole is underneath this moving sleeve. This is a sleeve shutter. And what I'm going to simply be doing is oscillating the tank back and forth. So it's just going to be a back and forth motion on the rotary base, just like that, with the intention of keeping the pinhole not get exposed to liquid. And then when I want to pour the liquid out, I'm going to hold it so the pinhole is in the up position and I'll pour the liquid out into its container. Okay, developer, stop bath, fixer, three rinses, a waste container for the rinse water, and I need a clock to be running. So I'm going to probably use my wristwatch right here after the hour. Okay, we'll go for two minutes on the developer. And pour it back. Okay, rinse one. Wastewater and the fixer. We'll do the fixing for two minutes. And two minutes. Pour back the fixer. And one last rinse. Before we open it for 30 seconds well let's see what we got in terms of results here Let me set the camera down <laughs> all right and oh uh, yeah we have a picture let's take a look at it if we can Looks like slightly overexposed, perhaps. Wow. There's an interesting texture to this picture. There's a 
kind of a texture to the shadows, but definitely it works. We're going to have to get a better composition here, but hey, it works. Nice and dry, yes indeed. And then when you peel the tape off after the print is dry, if you peel it from at an angle like this, it will keep from peeling off most of the emulsion. And this guy. And I'm using this artist tape, which is really good. It sticks to paper, but it doesn't stick so bad that it tears it afterwards. And pH neutral. Well, so I uh, let this thing rinse for a few hours in some water, and then I squeegeed it. I blow dried it on the surface, and then I taped it to a piece of glass and dried it in my film drying cabinet. This, of course, this Harman Direct Positive paper is fiber-based paper, so it will curl unless you tape it flat while it's drying. So there it is. It's not a great shot. It was just set up on my front patio. It's just a random little pinhole shot. The angle of view on this camera is fairly wide. Uh, of course, depending on how long of a piece of paper you're using, this one was about five inches long. And so wraps around the camera like that, uh, well past 120 degrees angle of view, I'd say, horizontally. But the vertical angle of view is not really that great. It's more like about roughly a 60 degree angle of view if you just make a triangle from one side to the other. So you, when you're composing with a camera like this, you really have to be looking for the horizontal. It's more of a panoramic kind of camera. Okay, there it is. Good results. Uh, the Exposure was slightly brighter than probably what it needed to be, I would think, because the darkest parts of the image are a little bit too light color, too light gray. But I rated the exposure here, so I rated the um, uh, paper at ISO 3, just assumed ISO 3. I used my Siconic meter to meter it, and it called for a 2 minute 30 second exposure in morning sun, winter sun, with a little bit of high clouds sifting in and out, so it wasn't strictly clear skies, and those kind of exposures are really difficult to figure sometimes. Um, in case you guys are curious about the calculation, so my Siconic meter only goes up to F90, but the camera itself is F283, and so you do 283 divided by 90, and then you square that number and multiply it by the exposure time recommended at ISO 90 at F90, and that will be the exposure for F283, which was in seconds, and I have to, of course, uh, divide by 60 to get how many minutes it is with a residual amount in seconds. So like two minutes, 30 seconds. So that's how that worked. It is an F283 pinhole, so it's 85 millimeter focal length roughly across from the pinhole to the center of the paper, and it's a 0 0.3 millimeter diameter hole, so that's F283. So as far as the processing goes, no problem. Uh, keeping the pinhole upright and just rocking it back and forth roughly a little bit more than 120 degrees, uh, not quite 180. But uh, yeah, it seems to work fine. It looks to me like my processing was quite even as far as I could tell. Excited about that. Excited to have a self-developing pinhole camera like this that can take this size piece of paper, what you might call right on the border between medium format and large format. I believe going forward I'm going to be using pieces of paper that are four inches wide by two and a half inches tall. And the reason for that is because I can cut eight of those from a, an eight by 10 sheet of paper. But this particular paper was actually three inches tall and by five roughly because it was just a scrap I found in my uh, one of my packs of Harman Direct Positive paper. 
And by the way, if you do happen to end up with a print like this one that was just slightly overexposed and you'd like to darken the shadows a little bit, you can selenium tone it. That's a good way to do it. Selenium toning will not only give you that kind of warm tone selenium look, it'll darken the shadow slightly and of course it makes the fiber-based print uh, more archival, protects the silver emulsion from oxidation. So there you are, the self-developing pinhole camera. It looks like it's going to work. It looks like if I'm careful about the way I uh, agitate the uh, rotary tank and how I pour the chemicals in and out keeping the pinhole on top. I shouldn't do too much damage to that thin metallic brass and uh, that's going to be fun going forward doing this. Uh, I hope that I can have this little kit of little containers and I'm hoping to be able to go out in the field and do these kinds of exposures and developing out in the field which will be fun. Of course, the challenge with fiber-based paper, of course, is drying it. So the next process I'll be doing with this will probably be the citric acid hydrogen peroxide reversal process. The problem with it, of course, is it makes the paper even slower photographically. And so since I'm using already a pinhole camera lens that is already slow at f283, that means the exposure times will be even longer. Like instead of, in this case, two and a half minutes, it could be upwards of 10 minutes maybe in bright sun. We'll see. But going forward, at least Harman Direct Positive Paper does work pretty good for um, direct positive prints. Well, this is Joe with another pinhole camera in my life. Do I need another pinhole camera? Well, to be honest with you, probably not. But on the other hand, this unused uh, tank, developing tank, was taking up the same volume of space in my darkroom as it is now. Uh, the difference is it was unused before because I have a couple other tanks of the same kind. And now it's going to get used as a camera developing tank. Well, you guys have any questions? Leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, as always, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.